when I can't do it myself. I can call on the name of Jesus. And he will be my strength. Hallelujah. Come on, say, God, I just need you to be my strength. See, because I'm weak and I'm vulnerable right now. And I need somebody to hold me up. Hallelujah. We need your word.
When I was in the hospital fighting COVID myself, I thank God because a little testimony. My mother first went to the hospital and she was in the hospital. You know, when your mother gets sick, that's a different emotion that hits you. Oh, yeah. But she was sick. She couldn't breathe. They can't, when she went to the hospital, all of a sudden they tell her she has pneumonia as well, which she's on a breathing. They breathe, she needs oxygen. Mm-hmm. And I'm already thankful because I'm like, Lord, I know you got her. I know you got her. You take care of her. Amen. Little did I know that my birthday was going to be coming up. And I too was going to end up in the hospital mm-hmm. for nine days with the exact same thing my mother was dealing with. Mm-hmm. Couldn't breathe. So bad I couldn't even get up to use the bathroom if I wanted to on my own because I didn't have the oxygen level to do it. Mm-hmm. COVID yeah. serious. Yeah. Yeah. Having somebody have to help you to move, it's a you realize how fragile you are yeah. and how fragile life is. So as I was sitting there, I started I began to think about Sister Brenda mm-hmm. when she first was going through this. And the situation that she had where they had to get into the hospital. And when they got into the hospital, you don't never know how it's going to turn out. But then when you look back, sometimes when you when you get delivered from something, you easily forget what you went through, the journey. But I can't forget the journey because it affected too many people. Everybody right now probably can have somebody that they know is going through something. You can't forget. Don't forget. Be thankful because everybody's not here. But I'm thankful because we are still yet here. But God put this in my spirit. Go ahead and play the um, play Breathe by Maverick City for me, please. God put this in my spirit, and he just wanted to remind me, because in a hospital, nobody can visit you. Nobody can come by your side. Nobody can hold your hand. It's you by yourself. It's you by yourself. And God wanted to remind me that I am not alone. God wants me on today to remind you nothing more than that you are not alone on today. The song says just breathe Because that's what God told me Just breathe And it's funny that God said just breathe When I can't even breathe for myself How you tell me God to breathe When I need I got an oxygen tank Helping me to breathe But you're telling me to breathe And it, it puzzled me It made no sense to me But God told me to stop there's going to always be a situation in your life that's not going to be comfortable. There's always going to be a situation where somebody's going through something. But God told me to tell you nothing more than this. The very next time that you have a problem, the very next time that you have a situation that you don't understand and it feels too big for you, stop and just yes, breathe. Yes, yes. Stop and yes. just breathe. It took me a while to understand why he said breathe. Yeah. But I understand now. Because when I take that breath, when I breathe, when I exhale, what does it remind me of? It comes, it's a constant reminder that God is still with me. Because I cannot breathe without his oxygen. I cannot breathe without the breath of life that he put in me. So you are never alone. You will never be alone. How can you be alone if you can breathe and feel the When God wanted to create a fish, he spoke to the sea. When God wanted to create the trees, he spoke to the ground. And when God wanted to create man, he spoke to himself. Now this is going to make more sense in a second. Because I want you to understand this. If the sea, if the sea does not have a fish, right? Is it still not yet the sea? It's still the sea. The sea isn't relying on having a fish in order to be a sea. It's going to be a sea no matter what. If the ground does not have a tree, is it not still yet the ground? If God does not have man, is he still not yet God? God doesn't change. God is still here. We will always have God. The part that I think is so beautiful about the whole thing is that if a fish is taken out of water, what happens to the fish? It dies. If a tree is taken out of the ground, what happens? It dies. If man is taken away from God or is disconnected from God, what happens? We die. This is a constant reminder that we are always yet with God. 
Because if we were separate from him, we would die. The fish cannot live without the water. The tree cannot live without the ground. And we are fools if we think we can live without God. We need God. We need God. I'm not this not. I'm not, I, God is so good. I don't even have to think about making my heart pump for the pump. I don't have to think about. I don't have to tell myself to breathe to breathe. God is taking care of all of that for us. Yeah, he made it so you don't have to worry about things. Don't worry. I'm, God is the one that's keeping your heart pumping. God is the one that's keeping the lung, air flowing through your lungs. All we got to do is live and praise Him. Use that breath as the song says to praise Him. Amen. Use your breath to praise Him. Amen. So I'll, next time you have a situation, just stop. Just stop. And breathe. Yes, stop and breathe. Yeah. There's no situation yeah. too big for Him. No problem is too oh. big. God is not, he's not going to change. Go ahead and give me Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I want to read how the Amplified Version puts it. It says, Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, and victory of salvation. I want to read it again. I want to read it again. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says from the Amplified by Version, do not fear anything. Yes. For what? I am with you. Why do you have to fear if he is with you? Be not afraid for I am your God. I'm reassuring you. He's reassuring us that he is our God and he is with us. Do not be afraid. He said, what happens in the time of your trial? He said, what? I will strengthen you. Mm. And be assured that I will help you. Meaning, be assured that as I strengthen you, that I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to be with you the entire time. Yes. Be assured of that. He says, I will take, certainly take you up in my hand. My hand of righteousness. How many are familiar with the scripture that talks about if you're in God's hand? If you're in his hand, there's nothing that can pluck you out. That means that if God got his hand on you, you never got to worry about it. You just, listen, no one and nothing, not a demon in hell, can pull you away from God. But the only thing that the scripture doesn't tell you is that it doesn't tell you that you can't jump out of his hand. We can leave God, but God will never leave us. We're in his hand. And three verses later, three verses later in verse 13, what does it say? It says, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, for I will help thee. Right. How many times did God have to tell us that he will be there with us? Mm -hmm. That he will be there to uphold us, that he will be there to protect us, that he will be there to provide and keep us? How many times must God say it before we believe? Mm -hmm. It takes situations, sadly, it takes situations like these that people are going through for people to be reminded of who God is. Because there's going to be a testimony. Yeah. Sister Brenda is a testimony. A walking testimony. Yeah. Sister Delia is a walking testimony. Yeah. Sister Melanie is a walking testimony. Yeah. A, a Elder Elder Howard is a walking testimony. Yeah. Your family is going to be a walking testimony. Yeah. Even I think of Elder Pastor Tate when he had a stroke. And it's scary when you really build a relationship with somebody, you don't know how it's going to turn out. But Pastor Tate is a walking testimony. Yes. <laughs> he is still here. Amen. And he's not just here, I'm living my own life, I'm a, I'm, it's time for me to do my own thing. No, he's still serving God. Amen. This man had a stroke and still was trying to come to quick choir rehearsal. Right. No, he can't stand. Right. But because he loves God. Because I believe 
They correct me if I'm wrong. His belief is if I'm going to go out, I'd rather go out serving God. If you, there's no guarantees in this life, but if you're going to go, why not go serving God? Because there's an eternal reward on the other side of serving God. When you do your thing and you live for the world and do your thing, right? There's no reward for you. There's only death in it. But for those that know God, there's an eternal reward for you. Go out serving God. Go out serving God so that way when the time comes in the day of judgment, you will hear, well, well done, our good and faithful servant. Yes, Lord. Amen. God is good. Go ahead and give me John chapter 10, verse 27. I just want to reiterate what I already said. John chapter 10, verse 27. We're going to read the verse 30. God is reminding us again. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. That means that if you call on a God, you don't have to worry about if he can hear you or not. If you're his sheep, he's already telling you I hear you. He says, my sheep never know my voice, right? And he says, I know them. And what is the sheep supposed to do? The sheep are then supposed to go and follow God. We just heard all about sheep last week, did we not? Did Elder Howard not preach on sheep? Did she not remind us of who we are in the relationship we have with God? That how the sheep really are always going to be in need of the Father, of the shepherd? Why, why, why are we so much different from the sheep that we're supposed to be? He calls the sheep for a reason. Let us grab hold to the shepherd and never let go. We don't need to try to figure out what's out there in the world. Most of us spent our time in the world before we came to God. We supposed to big like that out of our system. Why are we still wondering what that life is like? How are you going to wonder about something that you don't get to live with? You're supposed to be. You're supposed to have that excitement about God. Because God is good. You're supposed to have that excitement the way the world wants to know what you have. Why is it that you got a family member on life support, but you're just sitting here praising God? You're sitting here not, not struggling, not sad, wrong with me, but thanking God for it. Amen. The, the world should be questioning us. The world should want to be like us. Why are we trying so hard to be like them? Amen. What do they have for us? Amen. Temporary things. Amen. When God's trying to give us eternal things. Amen. Let the world be like us. Amen. Let the world question how you do this. Let the world come to you. If nobody ain't get listen, if people around you know that you're a Christian and they never come to you to ask you for prayer, there's a problem. Yeah. If people around you know that you're a Christian and they never ask you about your God, then there's a problem. Mm. We must reevaluate whether or not we're really hearing from God or whether we're even really serving God. Mm. Because there's no way you're going to tell me that this sin sick world, yeah. the same sinners that Jesus, when he was walking on earth, always flocked to him, always wanted a healing and a miracle, yeah. they understood where the blessing was. They continually followed Jesus so much they would cross rivers to go to him. They would cross, they would journey, they didn't have cars, they would walk to him. Yeah. But they knew where the blessing was. <laughs> so if I don't never go to Deacon Hill, I like calling Deacon Hill out. If I don't never call Deacon Hill and say, pray for me, then there's a problem. Amen. Because is the problem really that nobody needs God was well, the problem really that people really don't understand that I'm in touch with God. Amen. Amen. That part. If I know that you know God, On fire. when I have a problem, I'm going to find you. On fire. Make the world find you. No, Make the world find you. <laughs> Praise God. That's good. I don't, I'm not confused about how good God is. I'm not confused about what God's power is. What he has the ability to do. I'm not confused by it. When we talk, we talk about the Hebrew boys all the time. We talk about them all the time. How they sit there, they stand there and had to take a stand for God. Saying we will not bow to your God. And then they were willing to go to death. But I love the words that they say that we love to quote so much. If God does it, Praise God. Praise God. But if he doesn't, he's still God. Amen. That's my favorite part of that whole passage. Why? Because it's a constant reminder that God at the end of the day has the final say. Yeah. Why we act like we got power to do anything? God has the final say. We still think, you know, man, man has a problem. Man has a problem. We love trying to be God. And don't you realize we're trying to be God. Every time we try to control 
control the situation, we're trying to beat God. Amen. What was the point of Jesus saying that as I leave, I will send back the comforter and he will be with you? Amen. What was the point of Jesus saying that the comforter will be with you if you're going to handle every problem in your life on your own? Right. What is the point? It's like, it's, like, it's like literally being in a wrestling match and your partner, your partner, you're the one that's in the ring. God is standing on the outside waiting for you to tag him in. He sees you struggling in the match. But instead of you just taking a second to look back and be reminded, I got God in the corner. Let me go to tag him, let him fight my battles. You want to step on and continue to try to go, I can do it. I can figure this out. Yeah. He's been standing there the whole time waiting for you. <laughs> How long does God have to stand here waiting for you before you realize all you got to do is tag him into your problem? Yeah. Tag him into your problem. Yeah. But no, we don't want people to think we're weak. Yeah. Right. Uh oh. We don't want people to think that we can't do something on our own. Who cares? Yeah. Man, listen, they always say, I grew up, my way I grew up, you got in trouble for crying. Not because my mom, but the men in the family was like, men don't cry. Right. So if I sat there and bust out crying, guess what? They punched me in my chest or something. Like, man, what? Right? And I didn't understand it at first. But I'm like, dang, y'all really can't. What's some of our feelings? You know, like, it's not, it's not, it's not a bad thing, right? But as I got older, I understood. They want you to get developed with toughness about you where you're not crying over everything. Right. But as I got older, I realized, guess what? Crying is a beautiful thing. I cry for everything. When I think about how good God is, I cry. When I think about God having mercy on me, I cry. When I think about God saving me, I cry. When I think about him being nailed on the cross for me, I cry. Who says that men don't cry? Yes, I cry. Amen. And I'm a man. Yes. Amen. And I'm a man. And I ain't worried about nobody and how they feel about my tears. Because the only thing I'm concerned about is does it move the Father? Amen. It's the only thing I care about. Does it move the Father? Amen. Yes, we serve an amazing God. Amen. We serve an amazing God. Amen. I would love to say I have even more for you on today. Go ahead and play that song, Christopher. I would love to say I have even more for you today, but I don't. Because some stuff is just so simple. Yeah. Some stuff is just so simple. Yeah. All we have to do is remember in the middle of our trials and our tests right. to breathe. Yeah. Amen. To breathe. Just you don't have to go grab nothing. Well, you can say Jesus if you want to say it because they say that's the name above all names. Amen. But after you say Jesus, take a second and breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> I tell you no lies. I'm not here to lie to you. Amen. I'm not here to lie to you. I would never stand up here and tell you a single thing that I, I, I myself have not experienced or seen. Everything I say, I say it because I've seen it. Amen. I've seen it when I had a girlfriend when I was younger. Before I even knew God, God has always been showing me God. Amen. I had a girlfriend who was so, got so sick to where she went to the hospital. They said, you know what? Call your family because you're going to die. Mm. You're going to die. She's not even 18 years old. She's young. Mm. But you're going to die. And this is when I started getting, reading the scripture. But I wasn't reading the Bible. I was reading Bible stories. And I would read about Samson. I would read about David. I would read about Daniel. I would read about all these people in the Bible. And I would constantly see a pattern that God was always with them. And that God is the reason they overcame. So I stood there. My, my girlfriend was not a believer. I wasn't a believer. But I, I knew my mom made us go to church. Train up a child in the way that it go, right? It may not happen when you want it, but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. So I'm sitting here reading the scripture because something told me. I didn't know God's voice then. Something told me. Call her right now and begin to read to her the scriptures. So I called her and began to read her all of the stories in the Bible where God healed people. And I said, listen, one thing I am positive about because I've heard this. I can believe all I want for your healing. But if you don't believe also for your healing, it doesn't matter. You have to believe for this healing. So... I would read the story and I said, they sent her home to go die home, at home. But I said this. I'm going to get off, let's pray together. It's funny how people that don't even know God in the time of need know how to find a prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so crazy. Yeah. I ain't prayed to God no other time, but this moment all of a sudden I can yeah, pray. Yeah. 
So I pray to God, and I say, you know what, God, I'm going to test you. I'm going to see whether or not you really are as real as they say. And I said, guess what? I said, one of two things going to happen. Either I'm going to find out how real God is, or she's going to find out how real God is. So I said, when you go to the hospital tomorrow, right, tell them you need a visit. When you go tomorrow, you're going to go into the hospital. When I tell you, God prophesied this thing to me. When you go to the hospital, they're going to go and run the test on you again. You're going to go ahead and strip down, put the gown on, you're going to go to the machine, they're going to run a test. But there's a problem. Because you're going to start to see one doctor after the next doctor after the next doctor come into the room. And before you know it's going to be over five, six, seven doctors in there, you're going to wonder what's going on. Because they already told you that you're not going to make it. And you're not going to understand. I said, when you start seeing this, know that God is already in the work. Amen. So literally, I kid you not, she goes, Person after person comes in, person after person. We're gonna have to keep you on. Listen, she went in there at seven in the morning. She didn't leave until two. I want to say eleven thirty at night. She was there all day because they continue had to keep running test after test after test. Why do they keep running test? Because the, what they said was meant to kill her. They could no longer even find. The thing that was meant to kill her, you can't even find. So when they stop questioning it, like. Look, at that point, you're like, hold on, somebody made a mistake. Maybe it's somebody else's result. No, they compared the results. It was hers. There was no mistake of what they saw. But the mistake was, I, oh, I'm sorry, let me give God his credit. I told him, when they tell you that you are not healed, right, they can't find it, tell them it was God. I told her, tell them it was God. So every doctor on that day learned the same lesson that me and her learned. That God is not only real, but there is no limit to his power. I don't tell you something because I just heard it. I tell you because I know God for myself. I experienced this thing. I've seen this thing. I've seen God heal time after time. God is good. Amen. God is good. We got something to pray for. We got something to pray for. This is your altar call. Lord, you, you continue. Lord. Oh, God, you show up, show up, show up every single time. You show up every single time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, you are so good, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you for granting us mercy. Thank you for granting us enough opportunity to accept you once again. This is the time that you have set. This is the time that you have set for anyone who does not know God. It's not their heart. The scripture says that Philip, as he was traveling, was told to stand next to the chariot. And he asked the eunuch, do you know what you're reading? And the eunuch said, how can I if I have no one to teach me? That is what you allowed us to learn on today, Father, that just coming to the house, we are able to hear your word. Because the scripture says that Philip began to teach them the gospel. And we know that as they traveled and journeyed, there came a body, big body of water, and the eunuch said, what? Here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? And he said, Philip asked him an important question. Do you believe? Do you believe that he is the son of God and he died for your sins? That is a question that is presented to every one of us on today. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Yes, Do you believe that he is the son of God that died and rose again to take away the sins of the world? If you believe that, this is your time. God is simply waiting. He says, if you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Amen. 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 Confess. Amen. Believe. Obey his word. Are you ready to be committed? Mm. This is your time.
not the later hour. But I promise you it is never too late until you are no longer breathing. Give God your life. Tag God into the ring. He's ready to fight and handle every one of your battles and problems. Thank you, Jesus. 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 All right, let's go ahead and we want the later hour. I thank everyone on today for coming. We're going to go ahead and transition now to our offering, and then we're going to have the announcements after that, and then we will dismiss. Amen. But I love you all. I hope you. I hope you just remind us how good God is. Amen. Just. Amen. But tithe and offering is for the uplifting and healing of God's kingdom. That being said, blessings go up, praises go up, blessings come down. Yes, what time is it serenity? Oh, Follow the direction of your usher. Amen. Continue to bless us, Father. Help us to be good stewards over our money, Father, so we don't have to feel the need to rob you, Lord. We know that there's even more that we should be giving you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Please bless us and help us to be wiser with our money and our influence, Father, so that we can be more of a blessing unto you in your house. Let this money go towards the needs that are in, the things that are in need of repairing, mm -hmm. fixing, paying off, Father. You are a great God. We thank you for what you have blessed us with. Continue to bless it as you have blessed us all of our lives. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Church announcements, any of that follow. Surrender Christian Fellowship, Building Fund. Singles are $750. For the dudes, couples is fifteen hundred dollars. Due by June. Amen. 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 Happy birthday to Sister Joyce Britton, January seventeenth. Amen. 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 God bless. Amen. Let's have a wonderful work week. Amen. Amen. All right, the dollars for the seven months today. Oh. I am so thankful to see every one of you again. Amen. You know what? I'm going to need you to do something. I'm going to need you to introduce yourself to everybody. Because our visitor has been coming three weeks straight. <laughs> and I want to give you a moment if you want to say something. I don't mind. Love the Lord. My name is Chris. Chris Perry. Um, I've been raised up in the Baptist Church back in South Carolina. That's where I'm from. Um, I, I used to be a traveler of the world. I traveled the world in the most negative sense, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I've traveled the world, I've been there and been through the storm. And I tell you, man, this is the sunshine that he gave me. Amen. Uh, and I've been clean and sober for 13 years. Amen. 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 And I trust and believe anything that I say. The pastor said something earlier. He said, I'm not going to tell you no lie. Yeah. I feel the same way. I'm not going to tell myself nor you a lie. Amen. Because my footsteps speak for me. Amen. And my footsteps is of the Lord. If God in heaven knows I couldn't be right here. No, that's right. I couldn't be here. I was sitting on the porch this morning. 
And I'm just looking around at the material things that the Lord had provided for me that I didn't have and I deprived myself of it. And he always, like he said, he always was right there for me to tag his hand and come on in. Amen. Amen. He came in and he's showing up and he's showing out. Amen. And I dedicate everything about me to him Amen. and those that yes. serve the Lord as well. Yes. Um, that's just some of my story. Amen. Uh, thank you for pointing me out. Because I am that testimony yeah. along with all the rest of you. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. because this is what God can do. Yeah. And to bring me from where he brought me from and me getting out of my own way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> getting out of my own way. Wow. Yeah. I, I couldn't say, I, I don't have no more words. Amen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.